So we are now online. Uh, welcome to the lectures of course microservices. Uh, it's winter term 20, 2021, 2022. And uh, this is a joint course uh, at the University of Kassel. And we have some guests of uh, University of uh, Douala, which is in Cameroon. It's a major industrial city close to the coast. And um, we do collaborate with those people for about uh, two years now. And uh, I invite those people to this course here and to some other courses. And therefore, this is in English today. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to speak in any language I understand, which is basically English or German. So questions in German are welcome. No problem. Um, you can do your homework. Probably no, you should do your homework in, in English because I also have hired some teaching assistants or tutors from Duala who are going to supervise your homework and, and give you grades and these kinds of stuff. And therefore, we will all do this uh, as much in English um, as, as I want, as it's possible. Um, let's start with the format of this thing. So in uh, Castle, this is actually a lab. So it's not a classical lecture, but it's much more like a practical thing. So what we actually will do is we will program uh, two microservices with graphical user interfaces during the this term. And each of you guys are going to do this programming stuff. And uh, I will actually show you all the steps and you just do repeat most of the work I done and some extra work. And at the end of uh, the term, you actually present your uh, system to us and that's what you get your grade for. And because uh, we want you to keep track of what is happening in the course and to do all the steps that we present to you in time, we actually ask you to present your project every week and you get points for your progress every week. If you are well, missing uh, to, to present uh, the, the new functionality one week, that's not a problem. You can get it a week later, no problem. Uh, so, but however, if you lose contact or if you are, well, um, do not manage to, to uh, build a certain functionality on a certain day, then it, this may become a problem on, on a certain week. If you are behind too much, it gets harder to, to catch up. So please try to stay in contact with uh, the course and to deliver each week uh, the new functionality. Then you will have great success with this course. Okay, uh, perhaps I should actually uh, introduce myself. So um, the most people from Castle should actually know me. Uh, I actually think you have already heard uh, the programming and modeling course in your third term. And uh, you have already participated in the software engineering uh, practicum, uh, which is a software action internship or something like that, uh, which is uh, a small group project. Um, if you are from University of Douala, you may have uh, spoken to some of the students that have already um, participated in this course. If you did not already do that, you should now do that. So you can contact, uh, for example, Amel or Frank or who else is already here today? That's it today. Uh, there is about six people that I have hired. Uh, uh, that we have hired in Douala that are going to help you um, if you are from Douala and if they have extra time they are also going to help the people from Kast. Okay, um, mm -hmm. that's how it should work. So, um, as I understand, um, Douala University, those people have, a, oh, there's a huge group of people in sitting in the back of Frank uh, Muani. So welcome to this course. Great that you are able to organize this. And uh, please wave your hands, guys. Can you hear me? <laughs> it's 
So Frank can, but at the back, those people do something else. Okay. Um, great. Um, oh, there's still sound problems. Cool. So, uh, yeah, morning. Cool. Um, so we are actually um, doing a video from this lecture. So it's actually a screencast. So the pictures that you can see from me are recorded and we will publish is on YouTube. Um, and this is just the picture that you can see. So it will not contain your pictures uh, because uh, this is a data protection act. And, uh, but however, if you speak up in um, Zoom, your voice will be recorded too, so that we can have actually, no, no, it's not recorded. So you can actually uh, do any uh, swear words uh, in, in Zoom, it's not recorded. Okay, it's just me that is going uh, to be recorded. Okay. Um, there's no full guarantee that this recording of my lectures is going to work. We have some failures from time to time. Well, actually, last year we have had no failure. After all, this is all due to Max, who's actually uh, doing a great job uh, here. So we are currently here in my studio, uh, which is a room at my university where we have set up some recording um, sync, uh, mic, uh, lights, and these kinds of stuff. And I have a second guy sitting down there. Could you wave to your hand, Max? Or could you just show your face to the cameras? Come on, stand up, go for the camera. <laughs> they, oh, yeah. So look for Max at your Zoom thing. Um, and uh, he's actually doing the, the, all the video stuff. So that is uh, recording nicely. I would like to go back to this formal stuff later at the end of this lecture today uh, that you get an idea what it is doing. Um, we do organize um, the exercises in Discord. I hope you all have a Discord account already. Ah, oh, no. Yeah, that is not what I wanted. Uh, I wanted to go into this Discord here. And this is the, the Discord channel. Uh, you, it's, I have actually a lot of Discord channels, one for each of my courses. And no, no, modern engineering. Where's the Discord for this one? Um, uh, you're already, please? You're already on this. Yes, but it's not on this slide here, is it? Of course. It? The green one. Well, the green one. Microservices. Yeah, here we are. And um, so Discord is uh, something like a, a, a discussion forum, a, a chat forum. Uh, and so all your, you can do the same thing that you can do in social media all over the world. And actually on the, uh, this Discord channel or a server or service, uh, there is a lot of channels and there we will actually, first of all, there will be teaching assistance available and there you can have, uh, can ask questions. They are available at certain times. We will announce this. Um, on the Discord probably, but you should definitely go there and, and, and um, log into the Discord. You need an account to do that, um, but that's it after all. And um, please use a readable name that we can associate with you um, such that we can actually contact you if you have problems and we can help you. Um, there is an announcement channel which is actually level. So for us today is uh, important. There is uh, a lot of uh, video channels and there's room where we actually will go to do the grading. So once a week, it's on Thursdays, I think. Uh, at which time? Uh, I think it was 12. Uh, 12 or something. We, I have it on my slides or it's also on the, on the website. Um, we will meet here and you go to one of these grading rooms and to a vacant one. And then uh, some of our TAs is going to visit you and you show your uh, current uh, prototype to us and then you get points of this. And this should take about four, five, ten minutes. 
if you join us, uh, the, the all the rooms may be crowded, so you might have to to wait for a grading room to become free. And as you seen, as you soon as you see that this one is free, you can actually join us. So that's basically the thing how it works. And then you earn points. We will record that. And um, at the end of uh, the the course. When you got um, most of the points or enough points, you will get your mark or your grade or whatever you need in your university. Okay, that's an important point. And there is an installation summary, which is enormously lengthy. And uh, we will go through that and you will actually have to do most of these steps during the course. And, and quite a number of those steps uh, are done at the beginning and I will revisit this um, soon. Let's go back to the lecture. E so, um, so what we actually want to do, oh, I would like to show to you uh, also the web page of our university. So some of you must have already found that, uh, but uh, it's a good idea to show it to you. Uh, because this is an important entry point into all this stuff here. This is uh, the website um, of my group, Software Engineering Research Group at University Castle. And there is uh, the courses I'm going to give this week, this term. And this is a microservice course. And here is some announcement about the lectures. And very important, there is this uh, area about um, presentations. Oh, come on. Uh, mm -hmm. I do this a little bit larger. And it says that we have our first lecture now. Uh, so I think Duala and uh, Castle, we have the same time zone. So or is there any time shift between us? No, it's not, is it? Rodrigue, do you know? Okay, no time shift. Cool. Um, the project presentations are Thursdays in the Discord. You can reach it here. I will ask you to register for this course via this link here, which opens a Google form. Please fill that one in. Um, and, and be especially um, detailed on this matricul number or student identifier because um, we will create a list where we actually put your points and we will send this list um, to your student administration office and they will actually then get uh, your grades registered and so this is very important. So do that, please. Um, and there is... Oh, where is this now gone? Oh, no. Ah, damn it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm using swear words again. I need to go to Castle again and close this on accident. Go for microservices and go for preparations. And there you find a lot of things that are very important for this. Here's the Zoom link that some of you already have found. Um, you get access to Google presentation slides. So if you click on this one, you actually will end up here and I can actually see that uh, some of you guys have already made it here. Uh, so you usually just don't need this. Is this for your convenience that you can actually go into these slides? However, sometimes my slides contain links to something. And then it's very convenient that you can visit the slide and click on it. And this would not work in the video. So that's a, a plus of the slide. And so it's an interesting to, to actually be there. Um, and yet again, we use Discord. And there is uh, another thing that is very important. That is uh, the GitHub Classroom. We will revisit this uh, soon. Uh, 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 OK, that's it. Content. It's a single page web application that we are going to build. And um, I'm going to um, explain to you what this means. And therefore, I have these more technical slides here. Uh, 
if you open up your browser and open a website, what your browser is actually going to do is it sends a request to some service in somewhere in the cloud. Uh, for example, to a computer, www.x.com somewhere. Yeah, and insert something here where this is more meaningful. And then you ask for a certain page with the name hello. And actually on this computer, so this box here is actually a computer, and this box is your computer. You open the browser um, and this sends a request to this server, to the web server. Uh, I would actually want to see the hello page. And then the uh, server looks, oh, where do I have a hello page? And he, perhaps he finds uh, hello.html. Uh, that is the actual page uh, on its drive somewhere. Um, and then it returns the content of this file, which is uh, an HTML encoded text. Who knows HTML, by the way? Anybody knowing HTML? Yeah. So something. So you have, you have these marks, these texts. Yeah, you know it. Okay. Cool. Um, ah, good. Okay. And uh, there's this uh, tags, HTML and closing tag and these kinds of stuff that are used to actually format your um, text in order to present it into you in a nice way. And um, then you actually see Hello World and because this H1 says it's header of level one, it is now big letters and uh, bold letters and, and you can actually see this very nicely uh, on your screen. So that is uh, something. So sometimes um, your web page may contain some links to other web pages or buttons to other functionality. Uh, and um, in a usual old school web application in, with static HTML pages, um, any action that you trigger here would actually send a request to your server and the server would deliver a new HTML page to you. Sometimes you actually do not actually recognize this because uh, if the old web page and the new web page have similar content, your browser does a smooth change so that you get the idea that my web page has just extended, but actually on a static HTML page, you get a complete new page anytime you do any interaction here. And this is uh, tedious and, 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 and bad. And so the modern style is, no, please, I just want to get new content. And I do the rendering, the uh, displaying of new information um, dynamically on the browser side. So the um, new school, this is still old school. No, so old school is strong here. This is now new school. Yeehaw. Uh, the new school is... Uh, no, that's the new school. Okay, perhaps still new school. I don't know why I have this one. This is actually double on the same thing that I have had before. So what we are going to build this uh, course is a single page web application, which is the modern thing to do. And in a single page web application, your page at, that is shown at the browser side, which is on your computer, actually contains JavaScript code. It contains program code. And this program code is well, reorganizing your HTML page all the time and updating it and uh, it's still running in the same thing. So it does not load a new page, but it is going to well adapt, to improve, to extend the chain, the page that you are actually showing. And the big point here is that your program that is running in your browser tab has local memory. So you have variables that you can actually keep between multiple interactions. So you have now finally something like a session where you can actually say, okay, this is the current state, 
that actually Max has by using this page for some 10 minutes now and he has done these, 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 these steps and you can have local memory, which was not possible uh, with the static HTML pages in before. So if you have, for example, a login page and you provide data and it actually does send the login data to your server and the server is actually validating whether the password is correct by looking down into a data space and then actually uh, it is uh, returning something like, yeah, it's okay. It's not returning a new web page, but it just returns uh, some status information. And uh, then the browser says, oh, if this is okay, then I'm actually going to swap the content that I'm presenting to my user by rendering a welcome page. He's actually, this one is actually getting a new welcome page, uh, but uh, actually, no, I switched to the welcome page. The welcome page asks for, I have an account, what is the real name? Uh, so I should actually know it. So why does it do it? So this example is nuts. Ask, uh, remember me that I, uh, recall me that I actually changed this uh, next year. So that, uh, that's a bad, a bad one. Um, okay. Um, so this is a single page web publication. So, but this course is called microservices. Uh, single page web applications tend to be very, become very complex, very soon. Uh, you have uh, single page web applications with uh, 100,000 lines of code uh, and a complex functionality. Um, so an example for this is uh, Google presentations, uh, Google Docs, all the kinds of things. It is a full size um, editor with all these functionalities and those have some 100,000 lines of code easily. And uh, because things uh, are getting nasty, if you grow very large with these programs, um, you would like to split functionality into multiple programs that are connected somehow. And that's basically the idea of microservices. I go back to the DIA show. Yeah, that's cool. Um, where um, you have not just one service in the cloud, but actually multiple services in the cloud. Well, in this lecture, we will have two services in the cloud. We have uh, one service for an online shop and one service for a warehouse where all the goods are actually stored and where the picking is done. So where some people that are working in the, in the warehouse are actually collecting the goods that you have ordered and send them out to you in packages and boxes and these kinds of stuff. So there is one location where you do the online shopping and there is one location where all the delivery is going to, to be done. So that's a, a, a pretty arbitrary split up of two functionalities uh, here for the sake of the course because I want to show or teach you um, how to split some functionality into two services or multiple services and how these multiple services are going to collaborate with each other. And that's actually the main the thing of this course. And it's a quite modern um, thing that you actually do. Um, that is actually, where is this actually coming from? Ha, huh. stemming from some books that are might be important for this course. It's Domain Driven Design. Uh, that is uh, by Eric Evans, who first had the idea that you should split uh, your big applications into smaller applications uh, that are uh, covering different areas of your overall functionality. There's an um, a successor of this it is uh, Bob Vernon, who is actually give you some more technical details. Um, I think you will find most of these books in the internet as PDF, and I cannot encourage you officially to download them somewhere from the internet. 
uh, in Kassel, the university library should have those two. Uh, and actually, yeah, you might want to read them, but it's not required for this course yet. Uh -huh, uh -huh. No, that's not what we want. Okay. There is some other book I would like to, to tell you I will show actually next time, which is on microservice patterns. Uh, we will do that soon. Uh, I will go... Ah, yeah, let's have a talk about this one. Um, so why do we do that? Uh, splitting one application into multiple applications um, is... Um, quite painful and it introduces a lot of new technical problems that you do not have when you have a single application. However, single applications do have the problem with single web services especially, have the problem uh, of scaling. If you scale up, which is you get bigger uh, in different sizes, you can become bigger in the number of users that you have in the data that you have to um, maintain and you can become bigger in the functionality that you provide. And each of these dimensions actually you run into problems soon. If your application grows bigger in whatever thing, um, you, well, you run into a problem. Um, so finally, so if your name is Google, you cannot actually answer a million questions per second on a single computer. You actually have to replicate your service on multiple computers, actually some hundred thousand computers, in order to be able to answer the questions of all the people in the world um, that are looking for some web pages. And so these kinds of uh, scaling problems um, um, resulted in multiple techniques that you use to, well, to handle these growing of your application. And there is um, x-axis scaling, which actually is exactly what Google did first. You replicate your things. So you have just multiple computers where each computer has actually the same data on it, the same page indexes, and then there is uh, requests coming in and you just do something like round robbing and the first request goes to computer one, the second to computer two, three, four, five. And when you are around all your computers, you start with the first computer again. That's a very simple technique that is used very frequently. Um, if you do just duplication, horizontal duplication, x-axis scaling, you get... Uh, much faster in read requests. However, you slow down in write requests. If there is a new web page showing up, it takes some time until all the computers that Google is running your their services on get knowledge about this new page. And therefore, well, yeah, that's the trade-off that you have. Uh, it goes down into uh, the writing speed and it goes up into the uh, reading speed. Um, however, what you can do next is you can y then access scaling, uh, which is actually scaling in, if you partition your data. And, and one thing is um, that you say, okay, uh, all the web pages uh, that have English content, those go to some services at um, the US or some computers running in the US. All those uh, um, requests that ask for German content go for Europe or for Germany or whatever. All those services that ask for French content go for Douala or something, or for Cameroon or something like that, um, and or for France or whatever. So you just split all the things that come in by saying, I put my, my huge block of data into different chunks. And uh, when a request comes, I know, okay, this is a request asking for a French page. So it's going to this computer who is answering all these questions. So you, you, you divide the incoming requests 
on, on, on to multiple computers by some property of the incoming request. And this has the um, advantage that now if there is a new web page showing up, which is in French, you just only uh, have one computer that is handling all the French pages that needs to do the write, and all the other computers don't do it. And you have, well, you, 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 you facilitate the writing because it's smaller chunks of things that you can actually write. And actually it's also, yeah, by partitioning your data, uh, you do not have the problem that you have already ad added the new page to this computer, but not yet to the others. And now someone does a question, and depending on which computer he is actually being connected to, you get different results. Something that actually happens with Google, that you phone somebody, and he's sitting in, in, in the US, and he does a request, and you do the request, you get different results. Well, you get already different results because uh, Google uh, ranks pages according to your cookies, to your personal profile, um, and therefore it might be different already. Um, um, perhaps Google knows that you are uh, using more, that you prefer French pages, and so you get French page instead um, of an English page. Okay, but this is a, another idea. So you can just replicate your service, you can partition them in services, and there is this y-axis scaling where you actually said, okay, I split my services by functionality. And I say, okay, uh, this is not working for Google because all their services have the same functionality. No, it's not true. Uh, there is this page request where you actually do some searching on the internet, but Google Maps might be on completely different computers because it's a very separate kind of service which asks for a completely different data and provides you with a completely different functionality. So it is a good idea to split the, the page search and uh, the Google Maps thing from each other in order to have, um, well, to, to uh, uh, split up the traffic that you have. And this splitting up things by functionality, that's actually the core idea of microservices. So you put different functionality of your whole system on different computers in order to, well, speed up to, to provide uh, better services to your customers. There's also a software engineering dimension to this. Um, if your service or your web server is actually growing in functionality, it will actually be harder to maintain it, to, to add new functionality to your system, because adding new code to your server well, it first of all uh, requires that your server is restarted. Yeah, and restart may need some 10 seconds. And if Google is down for 10 seconds, this is actually going to be on the news. No? Um, that's a major issue. You cannot, if you have some million requests per second and you are down for 10 seconds, you can't do that. So um, if you want to be highly available, that's a bad idea. And so it's if you have small services where these small services only used by a small number of customers, then it's much easier to actually um, well restart this service for some things. You can also do it easily in this replication setting where you have some old services and new services. There are multiple techniques to do that. Another problem is that if you add new code to your large code weight already, this new code may somehow interfere with the old functionality. So by adding new functionality, you may accidentally, well, destroy old functionality. And it's very hard to test this. And so you roll out the new version of your service, and then suddenly customers of old functionality start to complain, so why isn't this working anymore? And uh, it becomes harder and harder to maintain um, your old code base if it's growing too large. And so this problem starts when your code base is bigger than 100,000 lines of code. 
Um, and uh, your team that is going to work on this code base is more than 10 programmers. Um, then things start to become nasty. And, and software engineering tells, oh, well, you should do, shouldn't do that. So stay with smaller programs uh, and you are in a much more healthy environment. And so microservices is also the idea that it is that you split up the whole programming teams in smaller groups that uh, collaborate uh, together much more easily. And that's uh, the basic idea of um, this thing here. Okay. And it's Chris Richardson's Microservice Pattern. Yeah, that was the book that I was looking for. Uh, this is a book um, that you actually might want to have a look at. Uh, it's a quite big book. And, but however, you can download the PDF. Uh, it's for free. And uh, so you can actually easily look at that one. And it's uh, some 600 pages. If you read the first half of it, it's great. Uh, I, I, I made it to page some 450 so far. And, and at the end, there is more elaborate stuff that are, well, we do not cover in this course at least though so it might, might be helpful i don't know i didn't read it yet okay hey then that's cool here's Richardson. um and he actually has uh, developed the idea to split something in this direction and he also offers ideas on how to do this and how to do this scaling to grow for bigger applications so usually you do not need it if you start your enterprise or your project however uh, if your system grows and you are successful and your name is Google, Netflix, Uber, Airbnb. Do you have Airbnb in Douala? Yeah? Okay. Then uh, uh, you actually need these kinds of functionalities and these tricks and these kinds of stuff. So, and it is a very good idea to know these, te these techniques already at the beginning um, before you actually start to add too much functionality to a single web service, where you better split it up into. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have goals. Uh, I, I, I'm uh, forced to do something like uh, telling you what I expect that you learn this year. Um, you will be able to become. You will become able to develop web applications, supporting complex workflows. We will discuss the workflows soon. Uh, which are distributed onto multiple microservices. Uh, and we will do this with agile software development techniques. All these kinds of things will be covered during this lecture. And I only have um, 45 minutes spent, so the first hour more or less, uh, without actually doing some coding, which is bad for a lab. Um, so the rest of the course will be, well, no slides, no bullshit. Um, we will do much more probing work. Well, actually, still some slides to do. Uh, this is our system architecture. That is the system that we are going to build. We will have a warehouse client where our goods are stored and handled and the packages are sent to the customers, um, which is used, the, it has a web client, which is used by the workers in our warehouse. And then there is the service, which is actually maintaining the data, where is which good and how many shoes do we all still have and these kinds of stuff. And there is an event store, whatever this is. We will use an event broker. No, we will not. I'm not sure. Usually you have an event broker in the middle uh, who is actually um, exchanging messages between those two services. And then there is the shop side where we have shop web clients where customers, Alice and Bob and Eric and whoever um, is are going to, to buy something like shoes or cloth or t-shirts or uh, computers or whatever, or smartphones or what would you like. And there is a backend service who's handling all the incoming orders and so is delivering the offers to the customers. And this one also uses an event store, and we are going to discuss what this means. And I actually have prepared something which is actually new this year. It's event storming. Well, actually, we were using it already, and I hope by um, 
and that one works. You actually can have this link and it should open up for you too. Um, and I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. And this is actually what the functionality that we are going to implement during this course. And uh, so it starts with a standard use case. So this is actually a workflow description, uh, which starts with Peter Picker, who is working at our warehouse. And there's new goods coming in. There is a, a truck showed up in front of our warehouse and it uh, delivers us some pallets of shoes uh, that we need to store within our warehouse in order to be able to sell those shoes to our customers. And um, so there is a, a web page. So this, the, this burger menu up here indicates that this is a, well, a mock-up or wireframe of some graphical user interface or web page that is going to be shown in um, the web browser that Peter Picker uses on uh, his smartphone during work uh, in the warehouse. And it has something like a warehouse home and there are two buttons. So the, the um, brackets here mean or tell you that there is a button in here one to store new uh, no one button is for storing new goods uh, that has been delivered to the warehouse and the picking button is for sending goods to the customers to Alice and Bob who were buying shoes uh, on the um, shop front end. So this is the warehouse front end and we will later on have uh, the Microsoft graphical user interface um, for things that are happening on the Microsoft. And here is Kali, customer, who's actually going to buy some shoes. Um, and we will revisit this, but we will start with the warehouse today. And the warehouse, um, uh, well, actually what Peter Picker is doing, he goes for the store tasks, which is not visible on this slide. That's bad. I should have it. Um, and uh, he does, then he comes at 12.02 to a new um, page, which is actually the page where you can actually add pallets to your um, store. And currently, there is the, the warehouse is empty. So we have just started the service and uh, just built the warehouse. And now this is the very first truck showing up on Monday morning uh, at 12 o'clock. And uh, then uh, Peter Picker starts work and his shift starts at 12. And the first thing is uh, he says, okay, here, give me that pallet. I'll put it in, in the warehouse. And then he has a forklift and he's transporting these things uh, within the warehouse. Um, so he says, oh yeah, I will want to add some new pallet to my warehouse. And then there is a, a form opening and this form has input fields. And um, it says, okay, give the, me the barcode of the pallet, which is a barcode 001. Uh, what is the product on this pallet? It's red shoes. How many pairs of shoes are on that pallet? How many boxes are there? Let's say it's 10. And where are you going to store this uh, pallet? Oh, it's in shelf 42. And these are all strings. And then I press the OK button. I have uh, added all the data. Hopefully, I have actually transported the pallet uh, from the entry to shelf 42. And then I have stored it. When you click OK, your web browser is sending something which we call a command to your backend service. So it creates a command and this contains all the data. It's barcode B01, where choose uh, 10 boxes on shelf 42. And then this command thing is sent as a JSON object to our warehouse service. So this a uh, pink box here is the actual service, which is seen by these three little computer racks up here. And um, mm -hmm. I need to shift. Oh, cool. It works. So in reaction to the command, which is sent by Peter's web browser to the warehouse web end service, um, web service, the web service actually does something. And uh, here the web service just creates some data record in a database. We will use a Mongo database for this. 
And this is the uh, octite palette. It has the idea B001, and this happens at 12.03 and two seconds. And uh, so it has a barcode, and it's still red shoes, 10 boxes on shelf 42. Once the barrel service has actually created this data record in its database, it's telling other web services, hey, there's something important happening here. You should know about that. And this is done by firing an event on the event broker. And this is done by uh, sending out an event. So these orange posts are events. And uh, this is the product store event. It's uh, created at 12.04 and it says, I have a new palette with this barcode and there are red shoes on it. And you do not need to know how many, just be aware we have red shoes on stock today. And so there is another service, the second service, the Microsoft service, who is listening to these events. And then I said, oh, that's cool. I will put those shoes on the shop. And actually it just first records that there is the red shoes here uh, on stock today. And this is uh, another database that is the database that is, belongs to the Microsoft. It's running on a completely different computer. So this is done on the warehouse computer. This is done on the Microsoft computer. That's a quite a different thing. And uh, just to show you how this is going on is, so Peter Picker is going to add more of those uh, things to our warehouse. And at the end, uh, the warehouse palette page shows that we have uh, B01, red shoes on shelf 42, red shoes on shelf 23, and blue jeans on shelf 1337 on the lead shelf. And um, so, the bean sales is now working on the Microsoft. So, this is a, a graphical user interface of um, the warehouse. This is a web page that is provided by the Microsoft or Microsoft microservice. And it says, oh, we, this is an overview of offers, which are currently seen that are uh, in our online shop. And there are no offers yet. Shit. And so um, Sabine Sales, who's working with uh, the Microsoft service, she says, OK, make a new offer. So he's, she is clicking on the ad here and says, OK, uh, we have red shoes for $42 and um, press the OK. This creates a command and the Microsoft is listening to this command and he puts a data record into its database and then it fires a product offered event and no one is listening to that one. Uh, but we don't know later on there might be somebody who is listening to this event. So we fire them per default, because later on we might want to extend our functionality and it's a good idea to have these. And so on and so on. So then sometime Peter uh, Kali is going to do actually buy some red shoes. And then there is a lengthy thing that is going to happen where all those things are going to work together. And we will visit these during our lectures. Now we are finally ready to actually do some work. Ah, uh, great. So we have half an hour left for, well, doing the, or preparing the first exercise. And um, to do, do actually some programming. So first of all, the Discord already said, come on, yeah. Start by downloading Visual Studio Code. So this is the installation channel on our Discord. And what you should do is start Visual Studio Code. If you prefer, you can also use IntelliJ Web Storm for that. Uh, it's another very popular IDE for programming TypeScript. Ah, by the way, we are doing all this in TypeScript. TypeScript is a, a type-checked version of JavaScript, and it's um, the um, language that you use for single page web applications these days. So you should, uh, should learn TypeScript and I will well, introduce it a little bit to you. Um, I 
assume that you know some programming language already, Java or something like that. And if you know one programming language, you know them all, it's all the same thing. So you know an if statement, you know a, a loop, you know um, how to do procedures, and that's all you need to know. And, and how to build up some data structure. And um, that should be an easy one. However, uh, we are going to do it in TypeScript and TypeScript has been developed by Microsoft and Visual Studio Code has been developed by Microsoft in order to enable people to program in TypeScript. And it is for free and it is easy to get for the people in Duala, while IntelliJ has quite complicated student license agreements which do not work for Duala and therefore we do it um, with uh, Visual Studio Code. It's just a recommendation. You can also use Eclipse if you want to. Uh, I do not recommend that. However, um, I will show you certain things, how to debug things and how to edit things. And uh, I will always use Visual Studio Code during the presentation on how do you do that. And it's probably easier if you switch to Visual Studio Code 2. If you are very familiar with your IDE, you can stick with it. And it, um, but then you have to figure out yourself how to debug uh, uh, a TypeScript program and how to install a, a, or create a new project in TypeScript and these kinds of stuff. Um, however, now I'll do it in Visual Studio Code. And luckily I have already um, installed Visual Studio Code and um, what I want now is, this is an old project, don't look at it. Uh, what we want is uh, a new window. Yeehaw. And then it says, oh, clone a Git repository. That is, oh, can you actually do this a little bit bigger? Can you? Can you? Yeah, you can. Uh, you have multiple ways to start a new project. What you would like to do is clone a Git repository. Who knows Git, by the way? So you need a, an account on GitHub, actually, and I'll actually show you where this is. And more actually, we are going to the preparation page, and there is this link to GitHub Classroom. And actually, what you do is you go for GitHub Classroom, which is, well, an area in GitHub where all the software, the GitHub repository, source code repositories for all your student projects will live. Uh, and this GitHub area uh, has uh, special access for all the teaching assistants so that we can look into your um, solutions and into your uh, development history and we use this for grading. So be careful what you send to that one. Uh, we will all use it uh, for grading. And uh, if you go for the link here, it says, oh, are you ready for this? Yeah, I accept this assignment. And this takes some time and perhaps you need to refresh the page. And then it said, okay, yeah, we have created a GitHub repository for you on a server where Albert can access it. And then you can actually, well, copy this. Where can you actually copy this? Please? You can just click the link. Then you get to the repository. I go for the repository. Great. And I still need the link. Um, code. Ah, here it is. Copy the link and go back to our Visual Studio code. Put it there. Hey. Yeehaw. I hope that one is asking for where would you like to have it? And I do have it in IDEA projects for Thumbel. So I was using IDEA IntelliJ for, for years. And I'm switching to the uh, Visual Studio Code for the, helping me with this course. And I probably have Microservices 2021 or no, it's old. It's Microservices. Give me some more Microservices. Uh, oh, let's do it here. No, I'm not sure. Yeah. Up, 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 up. Yeah. This one. Probably. Yeah, no, no good idea. <laughs> Warp. Create a new new folder perhaps. Uh, micro 
services lectures. Yeah, that one sounds good. So select the repository location, and now uh, GitHub is actually, or Git is actually copying the prepared project uh, from GitHub to your local computer. And yeah, I would like to open that one. And here we are. Install update later, go away, by the way. So what you are going to get is a directory which has two other directories in it, a micro shop and a micro warehouse. That's not very much. Um, we are going to use a mono repo, mono repo which is called a, a single repository for your front end and for your back end. This is a pretty modern technique. You should actually keep front and back end together and we will have to discuss this during the course. But actually, we use an extended mono repo. We have actually two separate services, which are supposed to be developed by two different teams. But actually, it's just you. So it's uh, one student developing both services. And we want both services in a single repo a GitHub repository just to facilitate grading. So that we can actually say, OK, what did Yannick actually contribute? And I can just check out one repository and see all the things that Yannick has done on the two different services. And this is uh, the project structure that we propose for that. This is very uncommon. For a real world project, you would have two GitHub repositories, but that would make grading for us very difficult if you need to uh, well, get the things of both repositories in order to have a look at your work. So that's basically the idea. And we start going to work in the micro warehouse. Um, yeah, so why not? And so what we need now is, let's have a look at the Discord again. Discord. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You need an account on GitHub to do that, what I just did. Uh, you might need to do Git Kragen, but actually I don't use it that much any these times. Perhaps you can skip that one. The next thing that you need is Node.js. Node.js is a web server. There are multiple applications, uh, multiple implementations of web servers um, that you can download, and we will use Node.js, which is the one that you use if you work with JavaScript. Node.js means that our backend, the web server that runs in the cloud, is also programmed in TypeScript. And that is just that you do not need to deal with two programming languages. If you want to develop your web server, for example, in Java, you would probably use a Spring or Spring Boot. That is a web server that is very common. Uh, you can use Tomcat, which is a web server which is very common uh, for Java backends and Java services. There is a ton of those. You can use Java Spark. That's another very simple web service, and we will discuss most of those. Actually, we will use NestJS, which is uh, another kind of Node.js-based web service. So basically, Node.js is a JavaScript engine uh, that lives on your computer. So usually, your browser tab contains a JavaScript engine that is ex able to execute JavaScript, and so we need one for the backend too, and this is Node.js. I have pre-installed that. You have to do it on your computer. Uh, and once you have done it, you can actually uh, install a lot of libraries. And the first thing that you need to install is Angular. So we have decided to use Angular as a graphical user interface um, toolkit for single page web applications. And perhaps we will do the warehouse in Angular and the Microsoft in React or in Vue.js, which are alternative frameworks. Perhaps we will do that. I don't think um, we will probably not be able to make it. OK, then you install NestJS, which is um, um, the another library that uh, provides you with a lot of functionality for the backend. That's it. And uh, you do all this and it will take you, well, 
Each of these uh, down things here will actually download half of the internet and, and tons of code and libraries and things, and it would make it very, very complicated for you to run it. Uh, perhaps NPM is the Node Package Manager. If you are programming in Java, you're probably using Gradle. Uh, NPM is just the same thing. And in, or Maven is just the same thing. So NPM is the thing that you use to download libraries uh, that you are going to, to use in your thing and some, some more things. Okay. And then what we can actually do is no, or we can use Mongoose is coming later. And some point in time, I can actually create a new project. And um, I want to do this with Angular. So I do, I, this is why um, Max is here. So he's going to help me on that. Um, and I do that here. And what we do is we open a, a terminal uh, that is provided by, um, oh, come on. I need to make it a little bit smaller in the font in order to have some space here. And I can actually close this one here. And so I am in microservices lecture. It's a project mono repo uh, a Zindorf. A Zindorf is my GitHub account. And this is actually what comes when you clone the GitHub repository. And this one here has um, a microshop and a micro warehouse directory already. And we go to the micro warehouse. Yeah, that's great. And that one is pretty empty. That, uh, but by now only the git keep thing that is you ignore it, please. So what we first do is I do an Angular create to create a web band. ng? ng new. ng new. And then the name of the thing, which is or micro warehouse, of course, is it? And I do it with camel case or with kebab case or you can use kebab case. Kebab? Yeah. Micro warehouse. Ho 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 ho. Yeah. That's it. And if you just click it, it is going to ask you some questions, I think. I think. I think. Come on. Hmm? Wait. Yeah, you, you need some patience. Here's the question. Would you like to add Angular routing? Yes. Would you, what style of Style sheet, what you would like to have. And, and we take thus, is it? Uh, Max? Which one you want to use? It's either SCCS or thus, I'm not sure. It's the one that Bootstraps used. So yeah, last time I used SCCS and uh, the Western was complaining. So let's do, do that one. Uh, actually, we. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, cascading style sheet, we are going to learn what this means. Uh, soon. So, but SCCS is the one we would like to have, and then it does a lot of things. So, some while this is installing, uh, some words about TypeScript. TypeScript and JavaScript um, are languages that are run by an interpreter. Well, actually, TypeScript is compiled into JavaScript and then executed. And there is a huge difference from the software engineering point of view between TypeScript and, for example, Java. So who of you guys knows Java? Yeah. Some of you guys know Python? Yeah, yeah. So in TypeScript and in Python, at the, well, no, let's do it on the other, the other way around. In Java, at the top level, you have classes. Classes contain attributes and methods. And methods may have local variables. And that's it. So if you write somewhere X and some name, then there are only three places where you have to look for the, well, what does this name refer to? It's either a local variable, it's an attribute of your object or class, or, or it's a method. Or perhaps it's actually a class. And those are organized in packages, and that's it. In TypeScript and in Python, 
at the file level, at the top level, you can not only have classes and packages, but variables, methods, anything you can think about. And um, this is a big problem uh, for separate separation of concerns. So it's pretty hard to um, keep your global namespace uh, free of conflicts. So if a young student adds a new name, X, on file level, there is a good likelihood that some of your libraries is using X already and that you are overwriting this name. There are name clashes all the time because this well, global namespace is so crowded. And thus, put adding a new name to the global namespace is forbidden for beginners. So you guys never add new names to the global namespace. No way. That is for library developers, not for you guys. And uh, there is a lot of discipline that is used in programming TypeScript in order to keep your namespaces tidy. And we need to stick to those. And actually, Angular has a pretty good idea how to organize the namespace. And it provides its own mechanism for a dictionary of things like variables or classes or methods or functions or how you name it. And it organizes them for you in tables provided by Angular. These Angular tables are in the global namespace. They are allowed to do that because um, they are library developers. You just enter things to those tables and they uh, check whether this is a, a clashing name or something like that and uh, handle all the conflicts for you. And this is what we are going to, uh, to stick to. And actually, it has created a lot of things here, and we will have a look at the at the tree here. Um, mm -hmm, yeah. So we are in the micro warehouse directory, and there is a micro warehouse in the micro warehouse, which is bad. And that is actually the project that has just been created by the Angular the ng command that I have entered uh, ng new. And it has actually a um, uh, thing that is called node modules, a source where the source code is going to be, uh, and a lot of other stuff. And uh, they have set the project structure for you for the uh, front end of our warehouse. That's the thing that we just have uh, built. And it should have had front end in it. That's bad. So, uh, we do what we always do, <laughs> we do it again. Uh, so, rm minus f micro warehouse. I can't look it, can I? I have no idea. Is it gone? So, I will remove it later on and we go for ng new micro warehouse front end. I don't want to say this is important because we have a back end and a forward end. Um, and those are two different directories and I want angular routing and I want sccs and he's downloading it again and we forget about this one here we want to be in that one and I try to kill that one again uh, kill it yeah delete yeah that one was able to do it and we go for the micro warehouse front end so, if you work with um, mm, 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 Visual Studio Code, uh, you have actually one Visual Studio Code window per project. So, what we actually do is we open the folder that we have just created and go for the monorepo and for the warehouse and for the front end and say, yeah, please, that one is what I want. And then there is a new window opening that is rooted at this front end directory and uh, where all these things that uh, it is doing is working on. Okay, cool. So now we can have a look at what we got. 
And uh, we got our one file that is very important is the readme, no, the package JSON file. We will have a look at that one frequently. And uh, this is something like Gradle build. Uh, who knows Gradle? Uh, that is actually the thing that says uh, which are the libraries that I am using, which are the packages I am creating, and these kinds of stuff. And it has a lot of dependencies that are things that are used by our code. It has development dependencies that are things that are used during development, so testing things and these kinds of stuff. And it has a lot of scripts um, that are used to actually, well, which are build commands after all. And the one that's important is the ng serve. And I'll add a minus open to it um, just for convenience. And then I do a new terminal. And I should now be able to say it's npm run. So npm run tells him, oh, please run one of my scripts. And here are the scripts. And I would like to execute the start script. And if I do that, uh, it probably uh, does a lot of compiling and things. And it will take again years after years and downloading half the internet, compiling Angular core. It runs faster the second time you do that. Um, but you will actually need that. Uh, so it's, oh, yeah, we have 15 minutes left. That's great. So uh, that will actually open a web page for you. I enlarge this a little bit. And it says it's localhost 4200. So this is a web server running on my laptop and I can an opening port 4200 and I can actually my browser can connect to this web server and then I get delivered this first page. So if you reach this point, you have actually implemented your first uh, yeah, web, 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 single page web application. So that's your web application. It's a micro warehouse front end app is running. So it's actually telling you that it's, this is working great. And I'll put that to the right and we will actually revisit it uh, soon. And actually we could um, we'll put this to the left and actually make it a little bit more like this one and this one so that you can actually see both things on a single screen. Um, if you work at home, you might want to have um, two monitors attached to your computer. Um, one for the development environment and one for the thing that you develop. That's a good idea. And actually a third one, if you want to see my video in parallel, uh, that's a good idea. Um, and perhaps a fourth one for, well, for, for the Discord. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So uh, we could actually look where this well thing here coming from, and what we do is we go for we go for we go for yeah uh, source. So node modules. This is where all your library stuff lives, and actually npm the node package manager has downloaded <laughs> tons of JavaScript and TypeScript code to this node module things, don't look at it. It's it's really thing you perhaps yeah never go there. Um, here is where your web application lives. It has a main TS thing, which is uh, main TypeScript and it says uh, something like uh, I have no idea. Don't touch it. It has an index HTML which is uh, an HTML page which is loaded in the beginning. And it's actually not an HTML page, but it is an HTML template. So it's actually the Angular application is loading this page, attaches JavaScript to it, runs the JavaScript, and the JavaScript is going through this page and is going to change it. And what it first does, it looks for these for this special tag here, app root, and replaces it by things that we have 
implemented in the app component. And the app component has a lot of things that we go through soon. And it has, for example, this thing here, uh, which is a uh, tons of things you do not want to know about. Uh, and we just change one little thing here, toolbar, banner, and no, no, welcome. Welcome is the thing I could change. And before I do that, I go back for, oh no, it's this one. Uh, make this one here, yeehaw, and close this one here. And yeah, compile successfully. And I wanted to change the welcome. Show you. Show yourself. Come on. Resources. It's also cool. Uh, Albert did this. As soon as I store this, well, actually, uh, the uh, ng serve minus minus open that is still running here in my terminal is listening to my source code to the directory where the source code is stored and as soon as it sees that there's something changed it restarts the web application so here it says i already did this oh let's do this again uh, i store it it shows up here so you get a direct feedback on what you are doing. Very important thing. So you have both pages uh, uh, side by side and you change some of your code and that is what you get. So, and what you first do is get rid of all the stuff that we don't need. Uh, and therefore we go for, uh, where's this clothing at all? Uh, let's go here and let's look for the closing thing. Uh, uh, I don't see it. Okay, this one I can kill. So this is demo content I don't need. Uh, then there is a card container. Uh, hmm, get rid of it. Something has changed, I don't know what. Uh, and there is... It goes down to here. Go away, save it. One of those should go away. No. There's a footer. I just go from here. And go up to next steps. Let's say here. Ha! Did you see that one did go away? And I go up to resources. Go away. And I go up to actually to the very beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. Just delete everything here. Yeah. Uh, up to here. Failed to compile. I destroyed it. Uh, damn it. Uh, so why? I have no idea. Go away. Should I leave this up? Ah, leave the style there. I don't know. It's, it looks great again. Okay, so just to see if it's still working, let's have her H1, something like that. Uh, I am still here. Hey, here it is. So that's uh, how it works. And well, that's pretty much okay for today. And we still have seven minutes left. Um, here's still comments I do not want to have. Let's go away with it. And actually, what we can do is we go for our example, uh, which is somewhere here. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, the, the thing that we want to build. And we want something like warehouse home Store task, pick task. So this is the very first screen that we are going to build. So let's do that. Uh, I want uh, something like a, a home button. Um, yeah, there should be a button. Let's have a button. Come on. Yeehaw. Button called home. Let's 
So now we have a button and I want um, something like uh, welcome to the warehouse or warehouse, micro warehouse, micro warehouse. I like micro warehouse. Okay, cool. Hey, the first thing of our first page has already been created. Uh, we have this one here. We forget about the, the time here. No, actually what I have implemented is this one here, warehouse home. And then I want two buttons, door task and pick task. So yeah, let's do that. Um, so I do um, a button. And actually, if I do, yeah, let's do that. Come on, a button, uh, hee -ha. And that one is the store task button. Yeehaw. Hey, our store task, that's great. And I do pick task. Cool. Hey, no, not cool. It's all in the same row. That's bad. So we actually have to, well, do some more, mm, how do I call it? Our layouting here. And there is multiple things that we can do for layouting. One thing is we could actually do it this in a paragraph. P, P, P. Ah, come on. And then put this one up here. Uh, and do that one in a paragraph either. It's a P, it's a P. It's a bigger. Yeah, come on. Put that one in a paragraph. No, sorry. Paragraph. Um, okay, just for, we don't do it actually. So now it's two lines. A paragraph is actually tailing the HTML page, start a new line or well, a new paragraph after all. Uh, well, actually paragraphs are a little bit restricted in what they can do. So what you usually do is you use a div tag. It's diverse and says uh, it can have multiple things, but it's very close to a paragraph, but it is easier to, well, it's the thing that you do. Uh, so it's div. Yeah, okay. Uh, and now those are very close to each other. And you would like to add, well, something like um, layout into it. And as we have still some three minutes left, what we do is we open up a new terminal, a second terminal, and then we do npm install. Angular, I would like to have bootstrap. Hmm. Then just Google uh, bootstrap angular. I shall Google. Uh, npm install or? Are... NPM bootstrap 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 npm and then it should say how to install it uh, quick start quick start is great no no it's npm install group it eh, wouldn't be easier could it yeah. so install bootstrap so bootstrap this one takes a lot of time. Bootstrap is a very popular library for doing layout on your web page. It's provided by, I have no idea. Who's, who's actually doing Bootstrap? Can you can you Google that? Max? Uh, Max is going to Google that um, and, and that will help. Yeah, it contains a lot of stuff and uh, could someone add uh, npm installed bootstrap to this installation guide on discord yeah that would be great um hum, 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 hum. and if you have that you can actually use so why did we do that uh, we would like to add some stuff to our uh div which is class equal i would say it's row yeah which tells him, please do a new row. And then there's something more and we need to look at this. 
Um, I actually put that one big here and it says, yeah. So, um, no bootstrap, bootstrap layout. Overview of bootstrap. And it says, we want a grid. And it says, oh, you always do a div class container, a div class row, a div class color. That's the thing that we want. Um, and now I go back for that one. And I do all these things. And uh, hmm. yeah. Uh, Mm. Once is closed, that one goes away, that one goes away, that one goes up, 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 up. Um, 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 it's, yeah, all right, so, oh, shift forward, hey, cool, and it's still missing some clothing divs, I put that one away. Put that one down, yeah, no, that one up. And it still is missing this closing div. Yeah, that one is cool. And yeehaw, put this again here and put that one in here. So what we have now is a class container, and that one here is double. You don't need it. Sorry for that. That contains another, well, box, which is a row, which contains a single column, which actually contains the button. Uh, and there is another row, another line, and that one contains another column, and that one contains the second thing here. And if we Save that. It just looks pretty much the same as before. However, it's all left assigned. So what I actually want to do is I want to align it centered. And therefore I look again for how do you do this? Something like center, text alignment. Let's try that one. Hmm? Layout alignment. Layout alignment center. Yeehaw. Ah, uh, no, I do want justify. Where is justify? I did try this yesterday. And what you finally need to do is uh, justify, justify. Come on. Justify content. Yeah, that one is a good one. And then you actually click up with justify. Come on. Do you see it? No. No. Flex fill center. That's interesting. Let's try that one. Hey, so Mark says we are running out of time. So this is your assignment. Find out how you do center all this stuff by Googling in bootstrap and layout and these kinds of things. And this one, what I tried did not work. And then you show this to us on Thursday by meeting us in the Discord, as I have told you. And then we can actually check how the, all the installation work was going for you and how this is um, working for you and, and help you with your problems. Uh, actually come and visit us in the Discord, uh, in some of the student channels. Uh, if you have problems with all this stuff, if your computer refuses to install Node.js or things like that, and uh, if you any, have uh, any other setup problems. So the idea we meet again at 
Thursday around 12 o'clock or between 12 and 13 and in one of the grading rooms and you show that you have managed to, well, set up your project, run uh, Angular, come up with the first page, have these two buttons and have them centered. And that's uh, your first assignment. And based on that, next week we will go on and add routing to it. And then we will all have template stuff in it so that we add data to our pages. And uh, then we will, in two or three weeks, be ready to start with the work on the backend. And I'm looking forward to that. So I hope that uh, this is all interesting for you. And that I see you again on Thursday and next week. And farewell until then and have fun. Great. Thank you.